Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a banned Zerda deck called Zerd Alert, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And we're playing Zerda, the Dawn Waker, as our companion, a 3 mana 3 3 a legendary elemental fox. And the companion requirement says each permanent card in our starting deck has an activated ability, and then abilities we activate that aren't mana abilities cost 2 generic mana less to activate, but this effect can't reduce the mana in that cost to less than 1, and for 1 mana we can also tap Zerda to prevent a creature from blocking this turn, but that's not the reason we're interested in Zerda, it's the mana discount that allows for some pretty interesting combos in this deck, and the other main combo piece is High Alert, a 3 mana enchantment that says each creature we control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, but the real reason we're interested in High Alert is the ability for 2 a blue and a white to untap target creature, so if we have High Alert and Zerda in play at the same time, we can untap a creature for just a blue and a white, so if we have a creature that can generate more than 2 mana, then we can essentially make infinite mana with High Alert and Zerda in play, and there's 2 creatures in this deck that fit that description, and the main one is Faber Elder, a 3 mana 0 0 Tree Folk Druid with Vigilance, and the Faber Elder gets plus 1 plus 1 for each color among permanents we control. So by itself the Faber Elder is going to be a 2-2, but with a high alert and a Zerdine play we're going to have a blue and a red permanent in play as well, so the Faber Elder grows up to a 4-4, and then we can tap the Faber Elder, and for each color among permanents we control we add 1 mana of that color. So with all 3 of these permanents in play the Faber Elder makes 4 mana, we can spend a blue and a white from the mana the Elder generates, to untap it with high alert, meaning we can make infinite red and green mana with those three cards in play, and then once we have that infinite mana there's a number of ways we can end the game. The most straightforward one is Finale of Devastation for X equals a million, and then we get to maybe search up a Kenrith, the Returned King, use a floating red mana to give all our creatures haste and trample, and just trample over for a lot of damage. The other creature that can potentially make infinite mana is Incubation Druid, which normally only taps for one mana of a color a land we control could produce, but if we put a plus one plus one counter on the Incubation Druid by adapting it for instance, it now generates three mana of a land we control could produce. So with the Incubation Druid we can also make infinite blue, white and green mana essentially with a high alert in play. And then with that infinite mana we can once again close out the game with a finale of devastation. Then another way we can potentially win the game is with our Fay of Wishes, which has the granted adventure, which lets us search up a non-creature card out of our sideboard. So we can search up any number of win conditions out of the sideboard, including a finale of devastation there as well. We also have Kenrith the Returned King, which already just synergizes very beautifully with Zerda, making all these abilities too cheaper. And then we can just draw a ton of cards if we have infinite mana, and then we can eventually find a Fae of Wishes or a Final of Devastation to win the game. So those are kind of the three main win conditions, our two Kenriths, our two Finales, and our four Fae of Wishes. Fae of Wishes also happens to synergize nicely with High Alert, as a four toughness creature that will deal four damage in the air. So those two just synergize quite nicely with each other already. So let's take a quick look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got Gilded Goose to help us ramp, can make a food token for just a single green mana with a Zerda in play. We've got our four Fae of Wishes, we've got four Incubation Druids for the combo, then two copies of Paradise Root for a little bit more ramp and mana fixing. We've got the full playset of Omen of the Sea, which is also permanent that fits the Zerda requirement. Gives us a bit of card selection to help us find the missing combo pieces. And then with a Zerda in play it only costs us one blue mana to sacrifice the Omen to scry to. So those also synergize quite nicely. Then our two final of Devastation, only really wanted as a finisher. Every now and then we can also use it to maybe search up a Faber Elder or a Kenrith just to outvalue our opponent. Then besides the one Zerda companion we also have two Zerdas in the main deck in case the first one gets answered. Then the full playset of Faber Elder, full playset of High Alerts, and then four Teferis to give us a bit of interaction. Can also bounce the Omen of the Sea back to our hands to maybe draw some extra cards. And then two Kenrith the Return King, which is just a good card in a Zerda deck to begin with, but also helps us give our team Trample with the red ability, or can also put a plus one plus one counter on Incubation Druid for one and a green or just a green with a Zerda in play to generate even more mana. So there's a lot of nifty combos with Kenrith. And then going over the signboard, there's one card in particular that also allows us to make infinite mana if we don't have high alert, and that is Gauntlets of Light, a 3 mana enchantment aura, enchants one of our creatures giving it plus O plus 2, assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, and then the enchanted creature has, for 2 and a white we can untap this creature, 
Now, Gauntlets of Lights we can't actually play in the main deck. Despite granting a creature an activated ability, it doesn't count as a permanent with an activated ability itself, so we can't play it with Azur as our companion. But if we enchant one of our Faber Elder or Incubation Druid with the Gauntlets of Light, and we have Azurda in play, we can now untap it for just a single white mana, so that's another way of making infinite mana, and then with that infinite mana we can potentially win the game. Then the other sideboard cards in the deck include Gravedigger's Cage, which is just a very good card to search up in a number of matchups against Cat Oven, maybe Giruda decks, Lurus decks, so just a one mana hate card that we can search up with our Fave Wishes even if we don't have infinite mana. Then we also have a Soul Guide Lantern as more graveyard hate, this one especially nice against the cycling decks, which rely on Zenith Flare to win the game since that deals damage equal to the number of cycling cards in the opponent's graveyard, and with the Lantern we can exile the opponent's graveyard, unlike the Gravedigger's Gauge, which would not really help in that situation. We've got some cheap interaction with Devout Decree and Aether Gust. Return to Nature can destroy artifacts or enchantments. Then we've got some sweepers with Shatter the Sky and Time Wipe against aggressive decks. Planar Cleansing to destroy all non-land permanents. We've got an Ugin that can also destroy opposing permanents or potentially act as a win condition. Plain White Celebration to gain some life or maybe get some permanents back from the graveyard. And then we've got uh, three finales, the white one to make a bunch of tokens if we need to win the game without Finale of Devastation. We've got Finale of Revelation to maybe draw our entire deck. And then another Finale of Devastation besides the two copies in the main deck to also win the game. So no lack of win conditions to search up with our fave wishes. And then a mana base, we've got all 12 shock lands for Temple Garden, for Hallowed Fountain and for Breeding Pool. Then also for Fabled Passages to search up two plains, one island, three forests and then a 2 Temple of Plenty to round out the mana base, because we do need double white to cast Zerda. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck. And we're missing High Alerts, don't have the Fae of Wishes to maybe get a Gravedigger's Cage. So I don't love this hand. It's a lot of Teferi. Turn one serrated scorpion, so probably a sacrifice deck. Turn two priests, could be annoying. Probably want to bounce that with the fairy, keep our paradise root untapped in case of uh. Any removal. I'll play the goose. Can even block the scorpion here. And then we'll still be on the lookout for high alerts. Or we could fail of wishes for uh, gauntlets. More scorpions. Opponent can be playing Mayhem Devil with Lurus as their companion. So don't have to be worried about that. They can play Lurus, get back Scorpion. Instead it's gonna be another priest. And a Reveler. Alright, there's my mana sink, so... Don't think I have enough mana to get Gauntlets and make infinite mana here. Let's say I play Zerda. Yeah, I need four mana to wish. And then three more mana to play the Gauntlets I want to untap. But I can set it up for next turn if the Elder survives. But with two priests, that's not a given. So I think I would rather just play Zerda. And then bounce one of the priests with the fairy. Trust 
Trust me, I have a plan. Let's slow this down. Play Druids. All right. Can also sack food for one mana with Zerda in place. I can use a goose sacking one food to make one mana, and then the other mana I can use to gain three if needed. Should they burn us out here? So for now, probably let go of the Paradise Roots. Gonna be another priests and an oven. All right. So can I make infinite mana? Fail of wishes for gauntlets, four mana gone, and then three to play the gauntlets, one to untap. And that should do it. So let's uh, tap manually here. So we don't mess up. Untap for one white. And now we can make infinite mana. And we've got both Kenrith and Finelli, which could win the game with all that mana. Luckily, it's not a lot of clicking to make the mana. It's a lot worse with the Incubation Druids. Opponent is at 26, so let's make sure we get enough here. I guess we're not making white mana with the Faber Elder, but I could instead of untapping it with the gauntlets, just tap it for white mana on the last uh, attempt here. All right, so X equals 25 should suffice. Get Kenrith. Everything gains trample. And attack. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Not an amazing hand, but probably still keepable. Missing the mana creature and the high alerts, but we have Fae of Wishes that can maybe get a Gauntlets instead. And a couple omens for a card draw. Turn to Sky Knight Vanguard. Could also play the Fae as a blocker. To maybe prevent a bit of damage. Now nah, let's go for the Omen. Try and find that Faber Elder as soon as possible. Aha, uh -huh, Temple of Enlightenment, so this must be a Winota deck then. So now I can regret not playing the Fae as a 1-4, because killing the non-human is pretty important here. Opponent might have a raise the alarm end of turn 2. Could just play Zerda. I mean, if our opponent goes end of turn, raise the alarm into Winota, we probably lose. Don't think there's much I can do about it. 
Fear of Wishes for Cage prevents the Winota from putting creatures in play from the top of the library. But I don't have enough mana to get the cage right now. So maybe I just play Fae as a blocker, so they don't steal anything too valuable. If they hit Agent, but they might just steal all my lands. Or I can just wish for cage, so I have it in hand. Alright, let's do that. If they're not on the Winota deck, this looks kind of weird, but... I think they are. And after a race alarm, is there a Winota? There sure is. So three triggers. Gets vanguards, agents stealing my land. And another agent stealing my land. Alright. Just to show that Gravedigger's Cage works against Winota, I'll play it here, but we are pretty dead. Fire Prophecy killing a goose. Sure. So yeah, the cage stops Winota. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine hands. Don't have many of the combo pieces, but we can maybe play a fair game with Teferi into a Kenrith. Opponent on Mardu with a Hero Precinct 1, so maybe a Human's deck. Hero is pretty scary, I think I will play Teferi now. Alright, there's a high alert, so now we're just missing a mana creature to go with it. Probably play Zerda this turn. Could technically double block Crusader too. If they uh, maybe try and attack the ferry. Yeah. Let's double block. There's our mana sink, so yeah, we're just missing a creature here to make us uh, infinite mana. Second so Omen of the Sea, hoping to find Incubation Druids. It's probably my best move. This might be a bad idea. Can also sack Omen for one blue mana with uh, Zerde in play. Do I settle for Goose? I think so. Can play the Goose right now and then still sack Omen. Looking for Fabor Elder. And this can also help uh, protect our Teferi. Alright, Lurus. Can get back the Stormfist Crusader. And the Corpse Knight plus Hero Precinct 1 does add up. So I don't have much time to assemble the combo. So 
So Teferi bounces probably the Hero Precinct 1. Another Teferi. Yeah, let's play it. Bounce Corpse Knights. Don't worry. I got it. And then might be forced to go for Omen over Paradise Roots. Although with the card draw from Crusader, hopefully we can just draw into the combo pieces. Could also maybe make some food to gain a bit of life. Can also upkeep, cast Omen and sack it to get the scry before a draw step. No attacks, so we'll untap. Do I want to cast an Omen? Let's just take my draw step. So I did find Incubation Druids. Problem is, am I going to survive this following turn? Probably will have to sack some food to survive. So let's say play Incubation Druids. Can make food with a goose, sacking food only costs one mana. And then next turn I can high alert and try and piece together the kill. Alright, I guess that's the plan. That's more like it. So I can gain six. Hopefully that's enough to survive. This only makes legendary humans indestructible, so it doesn't count for lures. Ooh, but a general pumping all those 1-1s one is going to be game over, I think. Yeah, if it wasn't for the general, maybe we survive and the next turn we can go for high alerts and then we've got the finale once we make infinite mana. with all. So the creatures that I need to save here are Incubation Druid and Zerda. The rest doesn't really matter. So let's say a block like this, block like this, block like this, and then I would still be taking 11 so yeah, even if I block, make a food and gain life, I'm still dead. Hi, right, jeez. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. No mana creatures, no Faber Elder Incubation Druid, double high alerts, got a spare Zerda. This ends pretty bad. Let's try again. This isn't great, but at least I've got a bit of selection with Omen. And we can get rid of the additional high alerts.
opponent on the cycling deck. All right, Faber Elder's nice. So we've got all the cards we need for infinite mana here. Now I won't necessarily have blue mana next turn, but I'll still be able to play my Paradise Root at least, which sets up the high alert in the future. So... Could also play Zerda this turn. And then make food with a goose, I guess it's better. And then next turn I'll be able to maybe combo off. Gonna take a bit of damage. Alright, so opponent's tapped out. Fable Passage comes into play tapped at the moment. So if I play High Alert tapping Gilded Goose, then uh, I'll be able to make infinite red and green mana. So we'll just keep making mana, and then on the last uh, time we tap the Elder, we can just use the Elder's blue mana for Fae of Wishes to get Finale. One or two more times should suffice. And there we go. Fae of Wishes granted for Finale. And then Finale for 20. Keeping red mana for the Trample Haste on Kenrith, just in case. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. Nice uh, turn 4 kill here, I believe. On to the next one. Alright, so we're on the play. Missing a high alert, but we've got Incubation Druids and a win condition. Yeah, I'll try it. Facing a turn 1 Innkeeper. So the interactive adventure creatures like uh, Bonecrusher Giant and Brazen Borrower could be the issue in this matchup. Double Innkeeper. And they are definitely playing the Teamer version. Just going to play another Druid and end of turn Omen. Just gonna cast a Lobstruck Beast, drawing two cards. So I still need a high alert to combo off. Alternatively, I can Fae of Wishes for Gauntlets, which could also work. So I can play Zerda and then still adapt one of the Incubation Druids. Now against a potential uh, stomp I want to adapt right now against Brazen Borrower, I guess it doesn't matter. 
Let's adapt right now, in case of a stomp. And then next turn, I could Fae of Wishes for Gauntlets, play Gauntlets, and take it from there. Opponent had the Brazen Borrower. And makes a 1-1 token with a Lobster Beast twice here. Alright, so... Can still adapt for 3 mana. And then do I want to just play some more mana creatures out? Because yeah, Fail of Wishing this turn doesn't really accomplish much. So I just want to get as many mana creatures in play as possible. Maybe adapt to Incubation Druids. Which I could do if I shock myself here. Yeah, I don't think I would be at risk of dying. I mean, I could definitely die to like an Ember Cleave or a Lucky Clover into Double Stomp, but... This way we have two Incubation Druids that could uh, potentially wear the Gauntlets to make infinite mana. Just draws two cards. Alright. Take five. Opponent passes, so they might have Brazen Borrower at the ready to mess with our combo. Don't have a Teferi to kind of force them to use it. And if the plan is to get Gauntlets, they can bounce in response to me enchanting one of my two creatures. Alternatively, I could play Kenrith and gain a bunch of life, they might bounce Zerda in response. But then I can still gain 10 life, which probably buys me enough time. Alright. So... I think I'll just pass now. Uh -huh, they had an Aether Gust, so let's make some whites. Take 10. Could block with Kenrith and put counters on it with the Incubation Druids, thanks to Zerda, but I don't want to lose my creature to a stomp, dealing too damage to it. Opponent once again keeps up 3 mana to interact. Alright, I guess we'll gain 50 more which buys us the most time. And then we'll just replay some more creatures. Of course, I'm giving them more time to potentially draw into Lucky Clover, and then another Brazen Borrower could bounce a lot of my stuff, setting me back. And yeah, there's a Clover. But we're also getting to the point where I can cast a finale for lethal without infinite mana. Alright, so that's the scenario I wanted to avoid. 
So we're gonna bounce Fabora and Kenrith. Might be better off adapting Incubation Druid as opposed to uh, gaining 15 here. Stomp in response. narrow points tapped out so I might be able to combo them so granted for gauntlets two mana and three from incubation druid left yeah that should do it Make sure I keep the right mana untapped. Make some green. So I have infinite mana. Our opponent knows we have a Kenrith in hand, which with infinite mana can win us the game. Looks like our opponent might have disconnected here. So we get to combo in peace. Alright, and our opponent explodes. We already had all the combo pieces we needed a couple turns ago, but of course our opponent gets to interact with the combo too. So that's where a Kenrith definitely shines, getting to play these longer, grindier games with a Zerda in play. So at the end of the day, the Zerda alert combo definitely falls in the jank category. It's not the most consistent deck, it's not necessarily fast enough to always outpace the aggressive decks, and it is pretty soft to interaction. So I don't necessarily recommend it for any competitive games, but definitely a fun uh, brew to try out in more casual environments. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.